Nicola Hill, who joins us live from London. Hi, Nicola. Uh, how much of a breakthrough is this test? Well, it is quite a breakthrough because it is actually a test that's looking for a different part of the body's immune system and seeing if it's come into contact with the coronavirus and has fought it off. Now, according to Dr. James Hindley, who's the man who's led the team that's invented the test, there's only a few laboratories worldwide at the moment that can test for T cells. It's a very laborious process. So what they've come up with is something that's really simple. It's just a, a simple blood test, not quite yet the fingerprint test that you have for the antibodies, but it's a simple one that's done by a doctor or a nurse and the results are there in 24 hours. Now, so far, their studies have been quite small and mainly on healthcare workers and teachers, people who they feel have come into contact with the virus. And they've been looking to see if they've got these T cells, if there's evidence of T cells. And it's interesting that sometimes people are showing a T cell response, but they don't have any antibodies. Now, that may well be because the antibody response has waned. And that's something, Andrew, we've been discussing for the past sort of month or so, the fact that it, it does seem to be that the antibody response to the virus seems to wane after a few months. And that's why it's so important if this T cell response can be measured, they can also then see how long it's going to last. So they're now planning to have much larger studies, these longitudinal studies, where they will test people who they think have come into contact with the coronavirus and people who haven't come into the coronavirus contact with the coronavirus they'll look to see whether there's any t-cell response and then they will monitor them to see if they come back into contact with the virus again and whether they're infected a second time or whether this immunity has indeed lasted for a much longer time and that's really what we're all hoping for right because i mean that could mean that some of us already have an immunity that actually hasn't been identified right Indeed, and also an immunity that might last for a long time. Right. So Dr. Hindley told me that at the moment they're hoping that this, these results will um, be useful when it's creating a vaccine. Now, we may remember that when we heard the results of the phase one trials of the Oxford vaccine in particular, they said that in addition to um, an immune response from antibodies, it was showing an immune response from T cells that they seem to have a play in this vaccine. And that's really important because if they can find a vaccine that does stimulate a long T cell response, then hopefully, hopefully the vaccine will work for much longer because at the moment we don't know, A, if they're going to create a vaccine, but also how long it will last for. Because, of course, the other coronavirus that we all know is flu. And we have to have a new vaccine every year for flu because the virus mutates right. and we don't know how long the, the current vaccines last for. So that's why they're hoping to, that maybe Got if it. this T cell response is but, as important as they think it is, it will help. Right. So what's, what's the time scale? When might we see some solid you know, results and conclusions? That's exactly the question I asked him today, and he said he doesn't know. Um, but obviously everything is being hastened because we need it. So the next step are these larger longitudinal studies, and that's when they will monitor people. Um, after that, then they can decide whether or not the T-cell response lasts for a long time. So we need time to find out how effective it is. But he's certainly excited by the results they've got so far. And they're going to start appealing for more people to, to join the studies. Um, at the moment, they've just been contacting, as I said, health workers and teachers. But it's going to go out to a much wider population. They need thousands of people eventually to join these studies. And when those results will come in, that's when we will know. Nicola, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for that from London.